tuition increase gets worse every day, and it's funny because, well, it's not funny, it's actually quite sad, but uh, for the last several years, every time you turn on the news, there is a headline about increase, there's a headline about riots, there's a headline about people not having access to healthcare, to education, there's a headline about services being unavailable there, and recently we've seen a shutdown of the most major news source uh, in Greece because the government could no longer fund the news source given the austerity measures they've been forced to undertake. And because of the austerity measures they've been forced to undertake and the regulations by the IMF, nobody's wanted to invest in the country, so no private investor could take up the news source either. And really the thing is that all of these problems and this conflict that happens in Greece right now has come down to the fact that Greece was sold a lie. Greece was sold a lie by the Eurozone, and the Eurozone was sold a lie by the IMF and the international community, saying that austerity was the best way to deal with these kinds of situations and we say no, it absolutely hasn't been and it's time to force the international community to absolutely be accountable for their actions because we think that the lack of accountability in the IMF, in the international economic uh, region, no thank you, has really undermined democracy in Greece and greatly has the potential to undermine democracy in other nations if we don't set the precedent uh, of the, these, these uh, organizations, particularly when the IMF has admitted that it was in wrong. We have to set the point that they need to be accountable for their types of actions. So I'll take you out of the models and then please. Uh, the solution that we're going to give to you this problem then uh, is uh, two parts. So firstly we say uh, that the IMF is going to be giving uh, financial assistance and planning preparation to Greece given the wrong that they've committed to them. This is going to be done every financial quarter. Um, and the second part of this is that we say that this situation is going to be reassessed yearly by a joint committee, committee between the Eurozone and the IMF. Um, to see what kind of reparations still need to be paid given the situation in Greece um, because they have been dug into a very deep hole for the last several years because of IMF policy and IMF, IMF uh, encouragement. Before I go, go ahead. What's your basis for saying that the IMF has actually wronged Greece? Uh, like I'm going to get to that a lot on my second point, but most basically the IMF is a body that has encouraged austerity, that wrote heavily about austerity, um, and that said that this was something that was going to work. They encouraged the Eurozone to uh, also say that this type of austerity is going to work, and it didn't. And they really did heavily have back uh, alley uh, loan dealings with uh, Greece and things of that sort, um, and really dug them into a deeper hole than they were in before this whole crisis broke out. So, um, before I get into that though, uh, we think that we have two things to prove to you in the opening government. And that's we have to prove to you that Greece, is, Greece was wronged uh, significantly, uh, and that they are owed something, and we then have to also prove to you that the IMF is at least partially responsible, although that we agree that there are other bodies that are responsible. Uh, we think that the IMF is, one, uh, very heavily responsible for this, and two, more able to pay for this than, say, the Eurozone or some other uh, uh, monetary body would be able to. So our goal in this round, then, is to encourage accountability in international economics. It's going to increase uh, 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 and create a stronger um, global economy, and particularly a stronger Greece, given the uh, horrible situation that they've been put in. So I have two points I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the situation in Greece, both historically and currently, and what that looks like and why it's particularly problematic. And the second thing I want to talk to you about uh, is the responsibility of the IMF in this situation, and why we think that they particularly owe Greece in this situation. So before that, thank you. Uh, the situation in Greece. Historically, we see that Greece was really uh, put in this kind of economic situation, not really by a choice of their own. They joined the Eurozone by financial and social coercion, uh, that they really didn't have much of a choice, uh, given the way that the global economy has been moving, it made a really silly, uh, it would have been a silly decision for them to not join the Eurozone. But then once they were put in the Eurozone and things started to go downhill, they couldn't leave the Eurozone for the same types of reason, because they're financially and socially coerced into staying into a system that's forced them to pay into austerity yeah. and buy into non democratic principles that they really can't get out of. But we have to see the fact that, Quite so different. given that this is not necessarily entirely their fault, right, a lot of this has a fault to do with the international community and global economics, we have to realize the fact that austerity has been terrible for them. The types of economics that they've been forced to play into because of joining the Eurozone and because of being a member of the global economy, which they really can't get out of in the modern day, um, and playing into the IMF's hands, right, has been horrible for them. It's done things like increased taxes, it's done things like uh, forced increase of the retirement age, it's done things like budget cut, econo uh, uh, budget cut education and hospitals and things of this sort. And really what that's done then is that in the modern day, in the current time, in the last couple of years, the situation in Greece is terrible. We have to look at the fact that there's no foreign investment because of the types of reports that the IMF has been putting out because of the austerity that they've forced Greece to be put into. There's, uh, the debt is increasing day by day regardless of the fact that they've been doing these economic policies that were magically going to be fixed according to the IMF. 
Uh, they've been having to fire more workers due to higher taxes. There are more sick people and less money to go around to help them. There is less education for people to get better jobs because of government cuts in the education sector. There are uh, companies that are less able to hire people due to the fact that the retirement age has gone up and they cannot fire people and people aren't retiring at the same age. Things are terrible there. People don't have jobs. People are rioting. The economic situation is going significantly downhill. And we think that this is all due to the fact that the IMF reported to the entire global community that this type of economic system of austerity was really going to fix the problem. So what did that look like with the responsibility of the IMF? And that's my second point. We think ultimately what the IMF did is that it was two things. First of all, it's pretty directly involved in the situation in Greece because they did a lot of quartering loans um, and basically like loan sharking to Greece, back alley deals with Greece for these types of loans to try and get them um, back on their feet, but they were doing it in a pretty like uh, technically illegal way in most countries, but it's internationally, so there's no accountability and there's no really regulation in these kinds of regions. So they're pretty uh, directly uh, related to Greece by paying into their austerity system um, that they had them go into. But beyond that, they are also very responsible for reporting to the international community a lot of different information, a lot of different reports in favor particularly of austerity. Um, many different articles finding this to be financially legitimate and things of that sort because uh, the, the uh, IMF really does have a lot of financial uh, legitimacy in this region and so a lot of people believe them. But what happened here was that Greece was the first experiment by the IMF. Greece was the first country that really started to go downhill. Greece was the first country that was really encouraged to take these kinds of austerity measures through these international bodies uh, like the IMF. And Greece hasn't had a chance to come back after the IMF finally admitted like, yeah, sorry, we forced you to do all these back alley dealings and made you do these different things uh, with your uh, economic systems. Uh, and now things are really bad and we realize that it doesn't work. It made things a lot worse. Other countries like Iceland, like Ireland, have had time to come back because they weren't forced into this system as early as Greece was. And we think that that's particularly the uniqueness of Greece in this situation. Um, but you're out of order. Uh, but the thing is, is that Greece is in a position now where they do deserve help. They are in a position where they're uniquely affected by this and where the IMF is uniquely responsible for this because of their direct dealings and because of the information that they've reported to the international community. We think for the rights of the people in Greece and for the uh, international accountability that is desperately needed, we are very proud to propose. The government would have you believe that everything that's gone wrong is in Greece is because the IMF came in and gave them a bucket load of money. Really, that is the problem, seriously. Let's think about what's in Greece. Before the crisis started, that's before the crisis started, 25% of the population worked without paying any taxes, worked on the black market. The deficit was so weirdly pointed out and so, and it came into the Eurozone by lying and uh, being I don't know what's the word creative with their with their accounts, but then what's the political politically okay for them? So it, you know, the IMF saved Greece in a moment of their need. It by no means did anything purposefully bad to them. Did they maybe make a mistake? Possibly, we can't even be sure. The info slide says that one guy says that it might have caused more harm than we, we would have expected. That doesn't mean it, would have, it caused more harm than any other measure that we would have implemented. There's no idea if any other measure would have worked any better. Maybe this was the best one, maybe we implemented it a bit wrong, but it's not the IMF's fault. They're what they're saying is that um, no, no, no. That Greece had no choice but to accept the IMF's conditions. Greece is the sovereign state of the world. It is responsible for its own decisions. There are states that have refused loans in the past and, and faced dire circumstances because of it. The, the idea is that Greece is now better with austerity measures than it would have been without uh, the IMF loan, even with the austerity measures. And now, we believe that the burden of the government is here to say that mm, the, the IMF acted in such a way that purposefully caused harm to Greece. Because otherwise, we can't really blame the IMF for putting all its experts to work and coming up with a decision that wasn't absolutely perfect. We believe that going on into my substantive, we believe that this for one thing is going to be punishing the rescuer, which we believe that it's un is unfair, first of all. And second of all, we believe that it, it would destroy certainty and act as a deterrent to uh, bodies like the IMF to save countries from failing. Which is much worse than, I don't know, some people don't have jobs in Greece right now, it's bad, it's on TV. 
Okay, so what, what we heard from, uh, and oh yeah, and also something that really annoyed me about the uh, government case, they basically said that they want to go back after the IMF and, and, and in opposition to the Eurozone, who basically acted for, uh, and uh, actively promoted the same thing, because the IMF is more, is richer than the Eurozone, and is better off to pay, which we disagree with, don't just go after the guy with the money if he didn't do anything wrong, in the, this case it didn't. Okay, so let's talk about punishing the rescue. Now, what the, the, the IMF bona fide went in there to help Greece to offer them a loan that they needed and they accepted as a sovereign state. Ex of course, if economics is not an exact science, it's not, ex it's not math, it's not physics. There are things out there that we can't control. The, the great economic crisis of 2008 was, in, was not predicted. We, the economics is not an exact science, and therefore we can't. We can't. It's exactly like that case in Italy where they um, where they tried punishing the uh, the scientists for not predicting an earthquake. It's basically the same thing. This could not have been predicted. And besides that, they have not shown us that Greece would have been better off without austerity. They just said that maybe they didn't implement the austerity well enough, or maybe they had too much austerity. And um, we really think that the degree of uncertainty that this harm exists, that this caused by, uh, by the IMF, is so uncertain that we can't possibly punish the IMF. Also about the practicality point, we don't know who is going to make these decisions. Who is going, their model says that it's going to be yearly reassessed to see if the, uh, the damage is, not, uh, is undone. But who's going to say who, what the damage is? Because this guy from the IMF said that it might have caused it. If this guy from the IMF suddenly changes his mind, are we going to change our mind? We don't know. Government doesn't tell us. Okay, so what we think is that um, the, um, what other measures were there for Greece? Uh, in a second, in a second. What other measures were there that were guaranteed to work and that we know now with the benefit of hindsight would have worked perfectly and would have gotten Greece out of there? Uh, because you could give all that, those examples of Ireland and all those countries who are still in trouble right now. Okay, uh, go close. How about the measures that the rich countries implemented? Like in America. Okay, thanks. Like the rich countries. Okay, the rich countries, so not Greece. Because Greece is not one of those rich countries. The economics that implemented the, the economics that affect Greece are fundamentally different than the economics that affect America. The spending types are totally different. The, the, the I don't know, the, the mentality of the people is totally different. Everything is different. And these things factor into economics. This is why economics is not a, such an exact science. Also, let's, talk, let's also talk about the precedent this sets and the need for uncertainty. We need things like the IMF and the Eurozone and the bail, bailing out stuff that is about to fail, especially if they're in countries, because countries that fail go into riots and go into like Somalia type situations. We don't want Somalia type situations, nowhere in Europe and nowhere in the world. If we punish the IMF for coming in and offering loans to these sort of countries, then we're basically punishing the rescuers, which is unfair. And what that will create will be a deterrent for these, uh, for these bodies, for these banks essentially, to give out loans to countries that need those because they might, because they, uh, the things that they, uh, they advocate might turn out after 20 years to be slightly wrong and they might end up being, uh, being liable for uh, some sort of reparations. We still don't know uh, who is going to decide how much or whatever. That's going to make it be very, very hands off. It's going to and it's eventually going to be turned into a deterrent. Economics is not an exact science. It can't be predicted specifically. So we don't think that the IMF is responsible for something that they could not have predicted. And actually, nobody in the world really predicted. Or nobody. We can't really punish them for that. And on the other hand, we also think that this is what would have happened anyway, because Greece is a part of the eurozone, which was advocating the same sort of thing. Not because the IMF was advocating it. Don't tell me the IM, Don't tell me Germany heard the IMF's argument and go like, oh, okay, I have a totally different opinion, but I'm just going to listen to you. No way. A lot of economic experts said that that was the way to go, and that's the way the whole of Europe went. We still believe today that Greece is a lot better off with austerity and with the IMF than without it, and we believe that the IMF did nothing wrong except they did everything that they could to help Greece out, with obviously like a bank that's worth with keeping in mind that they want to profit, and because of that we hope that you will vote against this motion. Thank you. Mr. Speaker.
speaker, rarely in human history has the suffering of so few been caused by so many. Mr. Speaker, we think what's been done to Greece is absolutely atrocious, and the IMF in particular is what was responsible for this. Three points for uh, three points for me today. Firstly, why the IMF in particular and its selfishness is responsible for the chaos and the devastating situation in Greece. I'm going to answer all uh, all questions um, the opposition had about why the IMF and not other bodies. Second point, why the suffering in Greece has been caused by not just the IMF but also European institutions, which are directly linked with the IMF and are effectively, for the purposes of this matter, interchangeable. Thirdly, how how such um, heavy austerity as a massive it's a very bad deterrent for fixing the for, for, for in the long term fixing the situation in the future. But before that, a few points for both. Um, it was mentioned that um, the, the problem was that Greece came into the eurozone with shady accounting, and then the IMF actually saved Greece. That's what that's what the leader of the opposition wants us to believe. We bet to defer on that one because the situation, Mr. Speaker, is the same with Italy, same with Cyprus, it's the same with Spain. But time and time again, we, we've seen the IMF has not saved those countries. It's instead taken advantage of those countries because saving those countries would have been allowing them to devalue, to reduce their public deficit. Instead, what the IMF has done has kicked the can down the road and given them loans at an extremely high interest rate, and it's the IMF that's single-handedly responsible. Because the high interest rates, Mr. Speaker, are absolutely unjustifiable. Because what they do is that they add on to the debt of these countries, which means in the future these countries have to pay back more, which means they eventually have to uh, implement more certain measures. This can be seen very easily in the real world as well, Mr. Speaker, when we take a look at the fact that Greece has had not one, not two, but potentially three different bailouts, all because of the high interest rates on the first one. The least they could have done is give the loans interest-free, but no, the IMF decided to prioritize its finances and charge um, extremely high interest rates. And what they could have done, another thing, is uh, give a loans with austerity not being such a strong precondition. Right? It's the fact that austerity was such a strong precondition that Greece had to implement such devastating um, different types of austerity that forced Greece to, um, to, to, go, to go down the spiral of economic, uh, economic growth. Second point of rebuttal, that Greece was a sovereign state and therefore accepted it's absolute rubbish. Because Greece's sovereignty is effectively non-existent. As a part of the Eurozone, and I'll get to that in my second point of substantive, Greece is not a sovereign state, and it wasn't by Greece's own choice that Greece accepted these loans. Third point, um, and uh, that's all the rebuttal for now. So okay, first so point of substantive, but before that, I'll take one through all of Isn't that the case that Greece is part of the IMF, and actually this is an international organization with over 180 members? So don't they agree to buy into these rules if they're part of the international monetary policy? They do agree, but that's only because the IMF has not left them with a better choice. The IMF has deliberately taken advantage of Greece's desperate situation and imposed Unjustifiably high conditions. Now, for our first point, first and science point, why is this IMF and its selfishness in particular? First of all, the haircuts that were a precondition on Greek debt 50% for private bondholders, for IMF bondholders, 0%. Greek citizens and Greek investors had to suffer 50% of their debts. Any, any Greek debt that was owned by international institutions, by, by the IMF, by other central banks, 0%. That clearly shows they're not concerned about Greek citizens, but only about their own interests. And the second sub point within this, um, sorry, I'll just continue on the first sub point. The fact that they impose these haircuts in the first place on private bondholders is greatly undermined investor confidence, which is extremely detrimental for companies who want more investment for projects, which cause them to lay off even more workers, starting off in a uh, self perpetuating spiral. Right? So, and, and secondly, uh, so the, the IMF also had a choice not to charge extremely high interest rates, but they chose to do so, which meant that Greece has more debt later on. And the reason why they chose to do that is because they know that the more debt Greece has later on, the more loans it has to come back to the IMF for the higher interest rates the IMF can charge. Second, the suffering in Greece has been caused by not just the IMF, but also by Germany. But these two, for the purposes of this, are interchangeable. Because Greece, let's admit it, it's fundamentally unfit to be in this currency union, right? Like a burger in Greece is much less than a burger in Germany. Like, uh, and Greek exports, as a result, are a little more expensive to foreign buyers because they don't have the option to devalue. Because the Eurozone is in this respect, fundamentally flawed because it's a monetary union without a fiscal union, right? Normally, it wouldn't be a problem in a currency union because one of the main factors, preconditions for a currency union is that there has to be free movement of labor. So that if there's a downturn in one part of a currency union, people don't just move. Classic example, the United States of America, 50 different states that share one currency because they have the same language, they can move around and they have no problem. But Greece, didn't have a choice. Greeks could have, in theory, moved to Germany, but since most of them don't speak German, they can't, right? So how can, how can Greece 
boosted its economy as a result of the austerity had to remove. Because let's not forget that austerity results in recession. So how could have Greece taken care of this recession? Two options. It could have either devalued, which would have made its exports more competitive. Now, because it was a part of the Eurozone, right, um, Greece couldn't devalue because it couldn't control its own monetary policy because that was controlled by the European Central Bank, which meant that the only option was for Greece to impose really harsh austerity, reduce wages, um, uh, 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 should try to reduce wages, to try to make employers hire more to, by reducing the minimum wage, trying to boost competitiveness that way, but that resulted in an extremely destructive uh, spiral with lower disposable income, which then slowed the velocity of money, which meant that uh, Greece overall is facing uh, less, uh, is having less consumer expenditure which results in all sorts of detrimental recession effects. But above all, though, it was Germany who had the incentive to make sure Greece stayed in the Eurozone. Because, believe it or not, the more Greece suffers, the more Germany gains. The more Greece suffers, the lower the value of the Euro, the more competitive German exports are. So therefore, Germany has the incentive to make sure that Greece stays in the Eurozone and continues suffering. So it's no secret whatsoever that it was Germany and the IMF together that, that imposed these harsh conditions on Greece. And, uh, and that resulted in unjustifiable effects for Greek citizens, right? Um, so, and, and, and all, let's also not forget the Germany in terms of uh, the, the Troika, the Troika institution that imposed these conditions. Germany was the single major player because it's not, uh, it's not the uh, European Central Bank in Frankfurt that controls uh, European monetary policy. It's effectively Angela Merkel from Berlin. So together, they forced Greece to not only uh, have any, to not only have no other options, but also to accept these conditions, have no other choice. And for these reasons, given the fact that Germany is a part of the IMF, we want the IMF to pay reparations to Greece, to, to, uh, to compensate for the suffering, and to boost Greece's economic situation so that it can finally stand on international national footing that, that it deserves as opposed to the one that has been imposed on it by, by the IMF and we want Germany to play a significant the significant part of these reparations because it, it's also been Germany that has had major responsibility together with the IMF given the fact that Germany is a part of the IMF and a major part of the IMF that is possible we're extremely proud to propose this motion. We think that they are forgetting many important considerations in making this assessment and I'm going to tackle, first of all, the causes of the Greek problems, economic problems in my substantive. Then I'm going to, uh, to refer to the unfairness of the measure which they are proposing. And lastly, I will talk about the practicalities and how this measure could actually work in practice, or could not work, as the team opposition uh, tries to argue today. So, moving on to the first point, which refers to the causes of the, of the Greek problems. We must remember, we must continuously bear in mind the fact, when discussing the motion, the fact that actually, the problems of the Greece economy are, are, can be traced back firstly and foremostly to Greece itself. It has been nobody but Greece which has concealed the size of their sovereign debt. It was Greece who chose, instead of paying its uh, sovereign debt, to continuously refinancing it in order, by taking advantage of the advantageous borrowing conditions which they benefited from because they were part of the Eurozone. And we think that for these two reasons, Greece itself is to blame firstly and foremostly for the problems that it's facing. Now, second of all, we must not forget the fact that the IMF is not a charity. The IMF is an international organization, and it's absolutely normal for them to actually impose some conditions on the aid that they are granting. Otherwise, arguably, the IMF could not function, could not fulfill its important roles, the role of, uh, of the rescuer, which is uh, currently fulfilling. We, we think that these conditions of austerity are necessary in order to ensure that actually IMF aid is made possible in practice, and we think that it was not the IMF that's merely speculation what the government is trying to say that all the, un the problems of unemployment in Greece and all the problems with the Greek economy are actually due to the austerity measures. Secondly, these austerity measures have been implemented throughout Europe and it's not just in Greece that they, uh, that they were implemented and we also forget about the fact, the government also forgot about the fact that without these austerity measures which the, and without the aid that the IMF has actually granted to Greece the Greek economy would have collapsed so we would have faced much more serious problems than the ones we are currently facing had the IMF completely refused to grant any sort of aid to Greece. Now, secondly, moving on to the second point, we refer to the unfairness of punishing the IMF in these circumstances. 
we think that actually their proposal rests on very, very uncertain assumptions. So first of all, there has been only a declaration made by some guy in IMF saying that maybe the, the, the austerity measures were not such a good idea for Greece. However, we have no idea what would have been the alternative, and we cannot decide uh, between what is basically conflicting economic theories. Who is to decide when doctors disagree? Is it judges? They have no medical expertise. They can use only judicial, uh, judicially manageable standards, and we think it's the same with this proposal. Pro presumably, since the government didn't actually define in their model who, which institution is going to decide whether the IMF is really to blame in this particular situation, presumably it would be a sort of judicial body. And we think that even though there is demonstrable evidence that we could have possibly in the abstract, even though, again, we don't know for sure and we cannot know for sure what would have happened if we had done something else, because we don't even know, I mean, the government didn't even propose an alternative course of action for, uh, to the IMF uh, bailout. And we don't know exactly what will happen in this situation. And we say that the IMF should not be uh, punished on the, mere, on the basis of a mere possibility, abstract possibility, that things could have gone better. We say sure. that the, for as long as the IMF had acted reasonably, as well as in good faith, the IMF should not be punished and it would be unfair to require them to pay reparations to Greece. We think that they, that should not be done. And secondly, uh, now moving on to the actual practical aspects of this pr problem. But before that, I'm going to take your point. Yeah. Did the IMF approach Greece with the attitude, you know, economy isn't an exact science, so this might not work? Well, of course, there's always a possibility that this might not work. But what we say, I mean, as long as a measure satisfies a certain objective threshold, which in this case, and the threshold proposed by the opposition, is actually one of reasonableness, as long as a measure is deemed to be reasonable, as well as taken in good faith, we think that we cannot decide beyond that point whether uh, another measure would have been preferable, merely on the basis of an abstract assessment uh, made on, on basically what is essentially a speculation. We don't, we cannot know what would have happened if we had acted otherwise. And again, we're only saying this with hindsight at the moment. So we, we're saying with hindsight that maybe actually you could have done something else that would have actually helped the, the Greek economy in a more effective manner. We think that since the action required at that point when the IMF actually granted the money to bail out the Greek economy, emergency actions would, were actually required. And the IMF had acted under pressure. It had acted with experts. It had acted on the basis of economic assessments. It had acted in good faith, and for this reason, we cannot now say that actually you should have done better, and we're going to punish you for that. But now, moving on actually to uh, private <coughs> charges. No, no, thank you. So, first of all, as my colleague explained, and the second speaker of the government doesn't seem to actually address that point, if we actually punish the IMF for the uh, aid that it had granted the Greek economy, we think that this, is, this would be detrimental to other countries which might in the future potentially end up in economic trouble. We think that the IMF will be disincentivized from actually granting economic aid to those countries, and even if they will actually grant economic aid, we think that that's going to be less effective because the IMF will essentially not be concerned primarily with uh, actually uh, making that aid work, but with shielding themselves from liability. So they will be concerned from protecting themselves from any potential reparations, abstract claims that could be brought in the future uh, merely on the basis of well, hypothetical assessment based on uncertain economic theories. We think, again, that this will be detrimental to the whole world, not only to the Greek economy. And on that basis, we think that it's, it's not in our interest to actually sanction the IMF for, for this uh, for, for on the basis of this hypothetical assessment. But then, moving on to the uh, next aspect of the practicalities point, which refers to which body decides actually what, whether the IMF is to blame for this or not. I mean, the, the government has not proposed in their model any sort of institution that could actually take this measure. And second of all, what would be the actual size of reparations? So how much should the IMF pay to the Greek economy for the harm they presumably allegedly did? We think that this could only be based on a second guessing of what would have happened if we had done something else. And what would have been the alternative? Well, we don't know. It's very, very uncertain. And that's, that's, this uncertainty is right, strikes exactly at the core of the motion that is uh, put forward by the government today. So for all these reasons, for the fact that the, the, it would be unfair to punish the IMF on the basis of hindsight, uh, and for the fact that it would be created that it is a highly uncertain measure, and also because of the practicality problems that it creates, we strongly believe that you should oppose to this one. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the floor. Now, I would
will bring you three things today. One, I will talk about the morality of everything and why do we give reparation in that sense and how this is legitimate, legitimate from a moral standpoint to, to make IMF give reparations. <coughs> Secondly, I will talk about what will this do to the IMF in the future and what will it prevent. And thirdly, I will talk about how everyone else will benefit from it, basically uh, developing countries and Greece. Now, before that, just a couple of answers because they've raised a couple of questions, right? One, when they come up and they say that IMF is not the one to blame because economy is not an exact science. We have a huge problem with that because IMF doesn't come and says, you know, economy is not an exact science. IMF comes and says, neoliberalism is a dogma that you will follow or else you will not get money. So that gives them a moral uh, a burden that they have to prove in the future, which they haven't proven in Greece, which means that they are morally responsible because they do not and they did not let this option of failing uh, as, as, uh, as a possibility at all. And that neoliberal consensus is something that I will talk about later on, which is problematic. Another answer that we really have to tackle with here, which is basically maybe not crucial, but we should tackle it, is that he said, you know, countries are different one from another. And that is the problem, ladies and gentlemen, because the IMF does one thing. It has uniform policies for different various countries, which we find extremely harmful and which we think that this measure will make them change in the future, which will make the economy of these countries be better off in the future, because IMF will change its catalog and its demands. Now, we think that's a good thing. But thirdly, and this is two brief points in the third, uh, in the third point of rebuttal or responses, they said which court? We don't think it's crucial. It could be International Court of Justice because we can sue them there. But the second response is much more important and it is, a, it is an intro introduction to my first point. And this is what size of the reparation will this be and who can measure that? The point is that we really do not care. And that is my first point of extension. No. The first point of extension is this. Reparations, ladies and gentlemen, is a moral tool. Reparations given from Germany to Israel, even today, even in 2013, aren't benefiting the budget of Israel. They are a moral message, which is transforming not only Israel, but also transforming the German interior public, transformed for decades now. It has been transformed right now. The problem with this is that we have to prove that IMS is morally responsible that this, that this will change them further on. Why are they morally responsible? Now, we say that we give reparations. When you harm another country or another entity to that extent that you practically destroy them and they destroy parts of their society, which is happening today in Greece, which I will not waste my time on because OG did it already, uh, but they, and that they do not have the means to defend themselves and that when they do not have a choice. Now, we have here four reasons why they basically didn't have a choice, even though they would like the opening opposition would like us to think that they are a sovereign country. Four reasons for that. One, Europe. Greece will not be allowed to get out of Eurozone because of German interests and interests of, uh, of big European countries. You simply cannot bear, as Greece, the pressure of these countries and get out, get out of it. Secondly, very importantly, they had a prime minister which was imposed from Brussels, a technocrat, which wasn't legitimately elected in the election. So it's not a sovereignty if you don't elect your own prime minister. You don't, you are not a sovereign country at that point. So these measures were imposed and not democratically supported. Thirdly, what we've seen is a diplomatic pressure of enormous extent, which we can, which, which Greece could depend on. And fourthly, IMF, when it comes to the, having to take the money from the IMF, is you don't have a choice, ladies and gentlemen, because they are the only ones can sit down and basically uh, make you uh, uh, the possibility to get loans from international financial institutions. Therefore, you have to accept their conditions because you don't have alternatives. Now, since I've proven you on four levels that they didn't have a choice, and the open government has proven you all the harms that they did, we believe that IMF is morally responsible and should morally, uh, and should morally respond to this through reparation and should be made to pay reparation <laughs> as a moral thing. Now, this is what I did because I knew that I have to have a moral argument in this debate, it's important. But the second law is that basically, what will this do in the IMF? Uh, two stuff, two things. One, it will deter them from future experimenting in similar countries. And why is this exactly experiment? Gordon's PI wasn't addressed very well here. Quantitative easing, cheap credits, and other sort of state intervention in economy is allowed for the United States of America, is allowed for big countries, is allowed for rich countries when they negotiate with the IMF, but not allowed for the developing countries. And that is 
because developing countries are, are, are completely made to be export oriented. That is because developing countries are completely made to have no subsidies, to have tax increases, and to reduce the public sector. All these things, all these elements are something you have to, uh, to sign in order to get the money from the island. All these things are not preconditions for the Western countries, and that is unfair. And not only that is unfair, but with, it will deter IMF from doing so in the future. They say IMF will not be so keen to saving other countries. If this is the saving that they are implying, then we're glad they will not save other countries as well as they save Greece. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Now, second thing that will happen to the IMF, it will finally do something to the neoliberal dogma that exists in the IMF. Okay, these experts might as well analyze further, might as well find alternative solutions alternative policies and this is good for two reasons first reason is because they will be more in a, no thank you they will be more in accordance with economic policies which are true which are beneficial and the second reason more important reason we need the IMF ladies and gentlemen the IMF even though it is not behaving as it should be uh, we need it because it can it stabilizes the international economy or at least it should therefore it has to save some face out of this and it will save none it will save no respect if it doesn't uh, 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 acknowledge that the IMF has mistaken. And the third part of my extension is why is it good for the others, which is basically Greece and other countries. For Greece, it is good for three reasons. One, it will bring, bring more money in the economy, because this implies that you will change the economic policy in Greece. This implies, that it heavily implies this motion, that you will change the austerity, the austerity which may even reverse them. More money in the economy means more production, means, means more paying for products, which means more production, which also means more jobs, right? Keynes one on one. Secondly, it will bring more trust in the economy, which is very important right now, because from Greece, people are uh, leaving with their capital because they are afraid. This will bring more trust. Why? Because it proves stability in the long run. What happens right now is basically chaos. And that's the third point. It will bring political stability, because austerity measures bring political instability. And political instability chases away money from your country. For all these reasons, we beg you to make IMF to pay for what they have done. Thank you. Okay, so first what I'll do is have a little bit of a rebuttal from the previous speaker, and I, he was so eloquent, and, I, and I, I really appreciate his comment, where he said that we need the IMF, and that actually the IMF stabilizes economic markets. And he also criticized the fact that the IMF is based on neoliberal dogma, but that ne exact same neoliberal dogma, which he said uh, is bad, he also said stabilizes the markets and has stabilized the markets until this current date. So actually what he said is, is quite uh, contradictory and actually uh, uh, is not really uh, makes a logical connection between the fact that he says that neoliberalism is bad, but yet uh, we need the IMF, which is based on neoliberalism, which has actually stabilized the global markets up until this uh, point. So that's kind of uh, an interesting um, comment that he made. Uh, now on to neoliberalism, because that was another issue that he said, and neoliberalism is something that's bad. Well, I mean, I don't know uh, what, uh, what world we live in here, but I think that we could all probably agree that from, let's say, the beginning of the 20th century until now, we have millions of people, if not a billion or more people, who have been lifted out of poverty and have actually had economic prosperity directly as a result of these neoliberal dogmas, which people are so much criticizing on the opening government uh, uh, side. So these neoliberal dogmas have actually lifted many, many people out of poverty. And so to criticize those actually does not make much sense. Uh, secondly, uniformity. Well, um, we also live in a very global market, right? I mean, we live in a, a, a world where people are basically exchanging goods and products from all over the world. When I eat my banana today, it's probably from Brazil. Or it could be from Jamaica or somewhere else. It's definitely not from Hungary. So we need to live in a, a, in, a, in, a, in a world where people exchange goods and services throughout different countries. And uniformity is essential to creating that uh, free trade between different countries. So actually, what I'm saying is that uniformity is very uh, important. Secondly, to the moral message that this, uh, this is, that if we loan you money, that we expect you to somehow uh, comply with our rules and regulations because we loaned you that money. 
So that's normal. We do that all the time. When people loan money from a bank and they can't pay back that loan because they decided to spend that money somewhere else, then they're responsible for that. And so we shouldn't have sympathy for Greece. I mean, why should we have sympathy for Greece? They're actually part of the International Monetary Fund. They comply. They were part of the rulemaking body which decided what rules the IMF were okay. implementing countries. There's 188 countries which are part of the IMF. This is practically the entire world. So to say that somehow poor Greece is victimized by an organization which they're actually part of and were uh, decision makers and deciding how this organization would lend money and what type of stipulations they would have on countries which lend money from the IMF is completely null. It doesn't make much sure. sense at all. No. Um, so basically what I would like to say is uh, we didn't really hear much about what the IMF is. I mean, we've heard a lot of the, how it's an evil organization that has done so many bad things and is so terrible for the world. Well, actually, the IMF was created in 1945. And what was it created for? It was created to rebuild Europe after World War II. We had so many countries that were in debt, economic poverty, uh, there was really difficult times going. And look at where Greece is today, look at where France is today, look at where Britain is today. All that is because of the International Monetary Fund and what they have done. Then what is the purpose of the International Monetary Fund? The purpose of the International Monetary Fund is actually to raise the global prosperity of the international community, is actually to reduce poverty. They're not trying to create a situation where Greece is more poor or making them feel worse about themselves. They're trying to help them. They're trying to make them feel, they're trying to make them improve their circumstances. Maybe some negative consequences to have happen to that, but that's essentially what they're, uh, what they're meant to do. And so, uh, what is the problem with Greece and specifically focusing on that? Well, you know, Greece actually, to be part of the Eurozone, actually lied about the uh, financial trade uh, that uh, they actually lied about the debt that they had and their government spending as a result to become part of the EU. So actually they lied and that's a big problem because when you talk about global markets, what you try to do is create uniformity between different countries. And when you have countries which are lying and seeking to maximize their own national interest at the expense of the rest of the world, it creates a very, very negative and detrimental situation, not only for Greece, not only for Europe, but for the entire world because we depend on transparency between countries. We don't want protectionism and neoliberalism is exactly about tearing down those structural barriers between countries to allow for free trade and economic prosperity to be global around the world. So that is what it is. And Greece lied. So we shouldn't really feel bad for Greece or have sympathy on them because one, they were part of the agreement in order to actually joining the European Union and joining uh, the IMF. And second, they lied in order to get into, a, into the IMF. And so what would we do? What would the situation happen if we decide to pay back reparations to Greece? And say, we're sorry, you sign on to, uh, to trying to reduce the government debt, try to reduce your spending, to try to create a stable market, free trade, which will benefit the rest of the global society. And you expect the IMF to say, oh, well, sorry that we did that, even though that may be at the expense of the rest of the world, because if we allow Greece to basically do what they want and have absolutely no sort of rules and regulations stipulating uh, what they need to do and how they're going to change in order to be more competitive and be more free in the free market, then this creates a very, very detrimental situation, not only to Greece, not only to the European Union, but to the global world which we live in. And the IMF, as many people stated in the opening government as well, is a very, very important organization and it stabilizes markets. That's the whole purpose of this. So if the IMF goes around apologizing because some negative situation happened in Greece, then it creates a very, very uh, a bad situation for, uh, for the rest of the world, which is very, very uh, detrimental. And you also have to take into consideration that Greece has had some of the greatest economic prosperity that they've had in the past 40 years exactly because they're part of the European Union and because they're benefiting from that. They came from a country which was basically a dictatorship and now they're a free uh, democracy which was relatively successful and had quite a lot of disposable income up until the economic crisis which everybody around the world were affected by. So uh, this austerity measures, which may indeed create some negative consequences to Greece at the moment, maybe five years from now, they will be a better, more well-functioning uh, economy because they took on these IMF measures. And at the moment, maybe they don't. In the future, it's possible that, that, uh, that Greece will benefit from this. But also, what's more important is that we keep the stability of the economic markets intact 
and by giving some preferential uh, treatment to Greece, then indeed we're compromising the whole global economic market, which is very detrimental for society and for the world and for the IMF as an institution. Thank you. So as a leftist, I need all this space because I'm probably going to go rage against the machine on this. Uh, three major points on this. First of all, who is to blame? Second of all, the Greeks have a choice. And third of all, what creates a better world economy? First of all, who is to blame? These guys stand up and tell you the lazy Greek story. Well, they are quite fat or lazy people we know. They are not that much different than any, everybody else. Why? Because when they talk about how they uh, created the create financing, you know who did creative the financing for them? Goldman Sachs. You know what they also do? They help the American government do the same exact thing. The only point is the American government has a little more credit than the, the Greeks have. This is why they can print dollars at their disposal and the world will still buy it. This is why they're still a globe. Now, but the point is, even when they got there, the IMF had the mandate to help the Greeks, not to judge them or punish them. Now, at that point, did they help them? No, they didn't. They tell them, you need to, you need to follow down the medicine that we have for you. And that is, inflation, you need to keep it low. You have to monetary tightings. You cannot, do, uh, you cannot sell your own, uh, your own bonds at, at the interest rates that you want to. You need to increase taxing. You also need to decrease public spending. And they said, when you, all, you do all that, everything is going to be better. The economy is going to get, get better, and uh, your people are going to be better off. Did this happen? No. Did they at any point tell that the economy is not an exact science? No. They sold it as something that is a surefire way to actually work. No. Now, was it the only way that they could do? No. Because as George had explained, the US TARP program and the Chinese stimulus. Second of all, we have South Africa, uh, South uh, American countries from 1960s through 1980s through the, through, during the period of nationalism. They were developing under, for example, very high levels of inflation. Brazil had 40% inflation, but their, um, their GDP growth at about 6%. So this means that inflation is not co fundamentally incompatible with growth, which is something the IMF just puts their hand, their uh, fingers and their ears and go la la la, that doesn't exist. Now also, we can see that even now, when Japan does something that's called abenomics, which is actually a, a large stimulus to the Japanese economy. After, after two decades of stagnation and having low inflation, the uh, Japanese economy is finally getting back to, to its feet by doing something that, that is completely opposite. We see it, see it in Korea in the 1950s, and I'm reading a book about it, it's really great, you should read it. So the 1950s Korean government did a lot of protectionism, and now they, they created Samsung, they created the LG, they created all these wonderful companies that I have to work for when I'm back in Serbia. So, second point, did the Greeks have a choice on this? A, they had a technical prime minister, so they didn't have sovereignty. B, they, have, they needed to step out of the Eurozone if they wanted to do this, which means that the Germans told them, yeah, we're going to kick you out of the European Union if you do that. So they're not exactly they had a choice on diplomacy. Yeah. Other creditors, IMF has a monopoly, de facto monopoly on the money that, that it gives away. He doesn't actually give away money per se. It, you sign a contract with the IMF, an agreement with the IMF, that means that the World Bank then gives you the most of the money. And all the other private creditors then have the incentive to give you the money that, uh, that you actually deserve. So, did they, could they, they go on elsewhere? The only other place that they could have gone is China. If they have gone to China, the China wouldn't give them any money. Why? Because the, all of that money would end up in German and French banks, which is not something that, that China wants, because they know that the Greeks don't have the monetary uh, independence. Yeah. And uh, finally, we have this diplomatic pressure that George, that George talks about in the text. Any government of Greece that went into power after, uh, after all, all, all the things that have happened, had they said, we don't want to sign an agreement with the IMF, we want to go at it alone, would be declared crazy by the diplomatic community, by the international community. Therefore, they had no choice. And even if, when the Greeks were inclined to do that, everybody was like, don't you even try. And then we have this final brilliant idea how they would have voted in the IMF against these kind of top stuff. Very good, except for the fact that the, in the IMF, your votes are based on the investment that you make. So the richer countries get a lot more votes than somebody like Greece, which has no money at all. So those are two major points. Who is to blame? The IMF is to blame. Did the Greeks have a choice? No, they didn't have a choice. And now, the fun part of this debate is what creates a word, better world economy or fuck neoliberalism? Yes. So you're trying to portray the IMF like this sort of Jedi and this Greece that this sort of dumb child that didn't know that economic the, the, the economics wasn't an exact science and didn't know what uh, what taking loans from banks mean. Seven year old well okay, twelve year old children understand that. 
The people in 11th grade understand that. Don't tell me that a freaking state doesn't understand that. No. The states know how economies work. The point is they don't have always the liberty to act in a way that most suits their citizens. Greeks didn't have that particular choice. This is the problem, this is why they should be reparated. So, the final part of this debate is actually what creates a better world economy. Now when we say we need the IMF, we're not saying we need the IMF as it is now, we're saying we need a body like an IMF that does actually better stuff. Why do we need the IMF? Because we need to freely allocate large amounts of capital. So when we talk about stimulus to, to countries. So in order to do that, we need to have an accountable system. When the IMF does something, and then it creates problems, then it decreases the capital markets if, if, if they let a country like Greece go to waste. This is, this is incredibly ineffective. This is why we feel it's good for them to have a certain amount of accountability. And bear in mind, this is not the first time that the IMF is wrong. The, the whole sub-Saharan Africa is under neoliberalist policies for the majority of the past 30 years, and they haven't been able to develop since. The only reason why you don't hear that upon the news is because they're not the European country with the flourishing democracy that the Greece has, and to get all the media attention about them. No. So, this is the truth about neoliberalism. So, yikes! Is it alive? Yes, it's, it's alive. Fine. Okay, I get 10 more seconds for this, yes? Cool. Other countries, now what does this mean for other countries? It means that you can create looser policies in those other countries. When we talk about inflation, it's fundamentally important that the inflation be loosened in some country. It's fundamentally important that the restrictions they have on patent law and stuff like that be, be loosened for them. Because it's the only way they can develop themselves. And for fun fact, the, a lot of countries actually already did, did this. Uh, we already talked about the 70s. We can also talk about the 19th century America, where they didn't, didn't allow patents from, the, from Britain, when they, where they specifically were protectionist, uh, even their, their first presidents. And in the 70s, when they had Keynesianism, where they weren't neoliberal. They, all, those, all those times, the countries were developed via non-neoliberal policies. And this is something that is a viable option and can be and should be explored by certain policies. And we talk about the 2008 and how neoliberalism lifts people out of poverty. It, it shunned them back into poverty remarkably well after the 2008. When it talks about the Marshall Plan, today's IMF would never allow for a Marshall Plan as it would be a large investment on side of the government. What we are saying is, challenge the dogma, cut the cord, gorilla radio. <laughs> Um, a lot has been discussed today, and I would like to summarize the uh, key issues that we have debated about. So, first of all, one of the key issues is um, who is guilty. So, um, the government side has been blaming, blaming, and blaming IMF of all this, all what has happened to, to Greece. But um, on the side of the opposition, uh, we would like to. Um, uh, we would like to point out that, first of all, uh, the, as it has already also been mentioned, uh, what has happened to Greece has happened uh, much earlier than uh, uh, when IF has come. So uh, this is the uh, fault of Greece that it has provided inaccurate financial information about the situation it had inside the country. And in uh, the situation, the economic situation that Greece faced uh, has uh, um, been like this much before the IRM has appeared in the city. So uh, once uh, 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 once the Greece um, uh, once uh, when the, uh, the need of, uh, of the country. Uh, to ask for a loan in the IM the IAM um, uh, provided its, uh, offered its help. And it was really, um, mm, uh, the country, uh, it was a situation of take it or leave it. Because if you don't agree with the uh, conditions in which the loan is provided to you, you should simply not take it. And as it has also been mentioned by, uh, by the opposition, uh, the, uh, the Greece is one of the member countries of the um, IM, uh, IMF, and it's, uh, uh, it has participated in uh, setting uh, the rules and conditions on which the loans are. Just a second. 
on which a loan a loans are provided. So uh, when uh, Greece was uh, taking the loan, it has also with this loan taken took responsibilities which it, uh, it has to uh, comply with. So um, uh, also uh, it has been uh, uh, mentioned uh, that um, uh, by the opposition side uh, that like uh, if we decide to uh, uh, so if we uh, decide to uh, uh, to offer the reparations to Greece. Uh, it, it raises much more questions that have no, too many questions that do not have answers. For example, who is going to decide how much reparation Greece is going to uh, receive, uh, what kind of reparations it's going to receive, when, etc., etc. Uh, also, um, uh, it would probably, um, the uh, government has cited as uh, the example of uh, reparations that I believe is really relevant. Uh, we have heard about the reparations of Germany to Israel, but if you really think about this example, it was not about that Germany was giving a loan to Israel and then like uh, trying to compensate for what it has done. It was really like uh, um, different, different things which we cannot compare and the, um, uh, the, uh, what has the cost to Israel is really not the same as is we see in Greece today. So. Um, uh, regarding your previous point, why do you think we said, uh, um, why do you think we domestically ban loan sharks? Why do you think we domestically set a ceiling to the to the extent to which a bank can exploit its consumers, uh, customers with interest rates? Do you, it's due to accountability, whereas the IMF, when it did the same thing, has not been held accountable. And the problem, the problem isn't, as you and your partner said, the Greece lie, is that other countries have had the same problems, right? But the IMF is taking the same the same measures with them. The IMF took advantage of the interest rates, even dis I mean, despite they didn't need those finances because it gets billions from countries like the US. So they didn't exploit our their Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, But as we have, uh, uh, as, as it has been mentioned, uh, there is no, we cannot, uh, it is really difficult to predict in the, um, uh, in the uh, economics how it will work for Greece. So there is really no uh, guarantee that these measures will prove. And uh, it might be that they will make more harm to Greece than, uh, uh, than uh, in uh, the, the situation in which Greece is now. So also, I would like to point uh, again that uh, we were believing that uh, there is something like a global economy in this world, and uh, most of, uh, lots of the, uh, economic globalization provides for uh, it expects that uh, the countries uh, comply with uh, with uh, certain rules, and uh, this is the precondition of their. Uh, like for performing good in the global economy, so it is expected so uh, that it, for Greece, in order to be economically successful, it was expected that it also should comply with these um, uh, rules. So um, I would like to um, uh, I would like to summarize uh, again. Uh, we believe that it was not the fault of the uh, IMF. Uh, because it was the fault of the Greece uh, of what, it has, uh, what has happened. Also, it was um, uh, also uh, Greece is responsible for um, uh, long it takes because it, uh, uh, it, because once it has taken a loan, it, it also uh, bears the responsibilities. And also, um, uh, there is no uh, way we can think of a, a practical tools and instruments how to pay the reparations uh, uh, and uh, also because uh, uh, Greece is a part of uh, global economy it should comply with this.